Again, I invite you to share with the larger community any insights, thoughts, questions, or comments that you might have focused on our presentation on Hope Encounters. Uh, I thought particularly poignant in your presentation was um, we hope is most possible in the worst situation. Uh, meaning that your second point on hope was when it's really difficult to recognize the need for, well, we recognize the need for hope, but that's where hope is really grounded in the reality of how um, rough uh, reality can be sometimes. And that's where we most need God. That's where we most need to bring hope into the world. Thank you, Mike. And it's true. It's both internal to consecrated life and external. So right now in consecrated life, in many ways, we don't know exactly, you know, where that road is. And so we have to ask God and beg God because you can't say, well, we've been doing this. It's, it's not something is shifting and we sense it. And so it really makes us look at this. You know, it's the I don't know. But also in that world that we're in and just say, what would it be? How? And, and what are the resources we can offer in this time with others? Absolutely. Thank you. My name is Brother Ray Hebert. I'm a brother of the Sacred Heart. And I moved here from Louisiana about three weeks ago. Oh, it's a very different weather. What gives me hope is the uh, man that I'm going to ask to stand up right there. Lincoln Sigwall is our novice. And we, he and I attended earlier this week, the Intercommunity for uh, the Mission, which is my first experience with that. But to see all the other novices, as well as the directors of novices there, gives me much hope. So thank you, Lincoln, and thanks to the others who are giving religious life a try. And the fact that Intercommunity Mission, that's something that probably before Vatican II would not have happened, that you would have an intercommunity vicia time where everyone came together and talked, that here that's just part and parcel. And welcome to CTU, this is part of the air we breathe. But you're right, that, that we are not, it's not about competing, it's about saying, I, this is a school of discernment, whether you're married, single, religious, in whatever area of consecrated life, to say, I am seeking to listen to God's call, and with whom may I do this? You know, and as Daniel was saying, we got to listen to one another and then respond. Thank you, thank you. It will cool off or get warmer <laughs> at some point. Hello, Maria. Hi, Jim. My name is Janet Lawrence. <laughs> I'm a sister of the congregation of Notre Dame, and I've had the pleasure of having Maria as my professor for three different classes. So it's, I'm very lucky. But what I wanted to say, you used the word embodiment quite often in our classes. And for me, embodiment is this love that God has instilled inside of me. And it's that love that allows me to dare to hope. And we are offered that every time we are saying the Our Father, the priest says, and we dare to say. And so can we dare to be daring in the, in the times of um, horrible massacres and killings and starvation? Can we dare to say that we can move from where we are and out into the world in places that perhaps we have never been or places that we are, but in a different way. And we do that as an embodied relational agent filled with love and hope. You would get an A, except we're not together this semester for that. <laughs> but, uh, absolutely. And you're absolutely right, because one of the things that goes with that, and I think you're in the congregation of Notre Dame, and one of your sisters was uh, abducted uh, in Cameroon along with some Italian priests. And just hearing those stories about how they saw that as their ministry now. Imagine, imagine that. And that that's how they, that was an embodied relational agent that they did that. And then how do we do that in our lives together? So that really, you don't have to take the whole chunk on, but, but it's almost like, can we dare not? You know, it's, it, there's a movement, there's something flowing in, and the shifts are simply telling us that. And they're having, happening all over society. So what if we could steep enough in God to listen to the lead of that befriending spirit you know, that we hear about in Gaudium and Spaz and, and is here and has been here? Um, it's, but it's part of that receiving it. You, to, we pray to be open to receive what is being invited right now. And that is a discipline. It's a spiritual discipline. 
um, every day. I, I pray to be open to what you are calling. Absolutely. And we do it with our very lives. That's why generative hope can't end up just sitting in a circle. It has to move somewhere. But you have to, sit, you have, to have that contemplative space or else we do this. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for two more questions or comments. Yeah. It's, I'm Eleanor Lloyd. You know, I'm a member of a very small Dutch congregation. I'm the last to have joined. And if you look at me, you know that was quite some years ago. Eleanor, I don't have it close enough. I'm sorry. Uh, you heard that part, though. The Lady of Bethany from um, from the Netherlands. I'm from the United States, the only American to have joined the congregation. There are 24 of us left, so and I'm the last. So I'm going to just I just want to reflect on that for a second because many people ask me if um, how do you stay hopeful. And that's been going on for years because I entered 46 years ago and I'm the last to have entered. And now, just in the last couple of years, we've done a lot of work in the Netherlands and, and the three of us in the United States um, and writing our spiritual testament. Mm -hmm. and, in our, and then our developing our material testament. And that's the hopeful thing because the ladies of Bethany are, have always been very hopeful people. And that's other. That's how that kept me going. And that, that spiritual testament was intended to hand on in whatever way we can what we really believe we were called to do and how to be about it. And to hand that on to anyone who may in some way or other get their hands on the spiritual testament and be nurtured in their own desire to spread the good news. And then the material testament, which is intended to support that kind of work in whatever way we can, to hand it on. And so what is hopeful is that it doesn't have to be a lady of Bethany or a Frau from Britannia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rather, it has to be people who are living the good news in such a way that we can encourage and spread the seed wherever. So I just wanted to share that as a hopeful sign that if, if people are in re religious vows or or not, they still can be doing this good work. Mm -hmm. So it was a sign of uh, a little bit of hope I wanted to share. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Eleanor. And it's a powerful witness because it's, we realize it's not really about us. We're in it and we offer what we can in that time, but it's about God's reign. And it's about inviting and moving that and saying, how is it to be? It, it, it's that purification of memory we hold lightly and you know, if you look at the life cycle of a number of orders over time, you know, the majority do not make it through the next epic. But we have this judgment that that means you're not doing what you're supposed to do. And it's like, no, 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 are we, are we doing what we're most deeply called to? And how do you then allow, in ways that I don't think we can yet see, what that even dying is going to offer for life? You know, it's, it's, it's Paschal, uh, but it's not easy. Now, and it's part of the new forms emerging and saying, what's, what is calling? And, but I love that image you're giving. Here's the offering of our interior testament, which is the best we might all be able to offer with our lives. Thank you. Our final comment. I'm Christine Athens, and I'm a Sister of Charity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, I was reminded throughout this whole wonderful presentation, Maria, of um, Martin Buber and all his ideas on encounter, and how he talks about sometimes we have an I get encounter and sometimes an I you encounter. And oftentimes, it can grow into an I thou encounter. And God, of course, is the eternal thou. But for me, that's very hopeful because not every relationship or every encounter is going to start out, you know, um, with some great depth. But we can know that as time goes by, it's going to grow and hopefully grow into something which will bring us closer to other people as well as closer to God. And um, I've always found that very hopeful, particularly, at, I know, I'm sure other congregations as well, who we talk about being a ministry of presence no matter where we are. And I think that being that ministry of presence in itself can be a hopeful sign. 
Absolutely. I think of this Pope. I mean, he's doing many things, but he's very present, and he's, he's calling us forth. Why is, you know, everyone is quoting him. There's something about what he's inviting that he's making an encounter. You know, that image from the Philippines it looked like feeding the five, that five million. Um, and and what, what is that, and what's that invitation to us? And, and just that it is about rooting ourselves and opening ourselves to the encounter, and not necessarily, as you heard a number of our students say, you don't have to know where it's all going to go next. We'd like to, but it was a student in a class last semester who said, you know, my, my brothers keep saying, well, back in the day we had 40 guys, you know, in seminary and studying. He said, that's, that's not what I came looking for. I came to live the gospel. And that is how I, I want to. And, and any number, and we only were able to, you had about 105 minutes of video that went down into, uh, you know, Vito was such a gifted editor, um, putting it together. But you had so many of them also talking about, you know, I'm, I'm humbled by my brothers and my sisters who, have lived so much and are about so much, and they ask me what I'm thinking. They ask my opinion, they, and they invite me to this and engage me with this. And then they also call me forth. And you know? so it is, it's, the, it's acknowledging the, the past, the, the gift of it is here, and the present is here. Look at who's around here. The present we're, we can embrace, because hope is with a capital H. Amen. Thank you.